1943, the, 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 the bombing died down quite a bit, but it suddenly started again, um, for some reason or other, which I'm not very clear about. We had got uh, a um, Morrison shelter in our house, which is a thing that prevented debris and the house collapsing on you, but it was very safe. It was a, a steel cage which we slept in at night. And um, my three sisters and me were all in this contraption. My mother, because of being a lull up until then from the bombing, had gone to sleep in her own bed upstairs. And um, anyway, this bombing started and it sounded as though planes were just over, over the head of our house, just over the top of our house. And they seemed to be circling around. And then they started to bomb. We could hear the bombs whistling down, which is a terrifying sound. And I thought for absolutely certain that I was going to get killed. I couldn't see how, because it sounded as though they were coming straight down on top of us, that we were going to survive. And I lay there and I actually remember saying this little prayer, please God, don't let don't let being killed hurt too much because I was convinced we were all going to be wiped out. Anyway, it, um, the bombs fell, there were, were explosions, but we, don't, we weren't at that time, of course, clear as to where it was. The bed sort of tipped up. I f fell out, I rolled out and rolled under the bed and lay there for a bit thinking, am I dead? <laughs> And of course we weren't, and um, we pulled ourselves together and my mother was, I can't remember what she did, except that I know a few minutes later she did what all good English women do and went downstairs and made a cup of tea. And it was about five o'clock in the morning and we all went down and sort of got ourselves together. Another friend of mine came round to call, it was a Saturday morning, another friend of mine had come round to say, oh, are you going to the pictures? Because children then were allowed to go to the pictures for six months, provided their mother allowed them to go, uh, because most dads were away at the war or being uh, or employed in munitions or something like that, and uh, mothers needed a bit of time to, to do other things, because many of them were working during the week. So we, we thought we'd go around to call for our friend Elizabeth, which we did, and got to the end of their road, which was all cordoned off. And I went over and spoke to an ARP man and said, could we go up and call for our friend? And he said, no dear, you can't go up there. There's, there's been an incident. So we looked at one another and thought, oh dear, that's it then. Never, never thinking that never thinking the worst. We went to school on Monday morning and when the register was called or when we looked around our friends were not there and the whole family had been killed in the bombing the night before which was a terrible blow. A very nasty thing to happen. We really got quite good at, at saying which what the planes were, especially the boys, they all seemed to know which which uh, uh, plane they could hear. Much later, toward, um, I had started in my new school, which was Greycoat Hospital in Westminster, and I used to get the bus down to the top of Vauxhall Bridge Road near Victoria Station, walk along um, Victoria Street, and round the back of the Army and Navy stores, However, I was halfway to school this particular morning and I heard a V1 coming. You, you, you knew the sounds of the V1s coming over. V2s you didn't, really. They just came out of the blue. But V1s, I think the most terrifying things, because you could hear them coming and you knew that at some time or other they were going to cut out and fall and explode. However, I kept going, but the thing got nearer and nearer and nearer and suddenly cut out and I was just petrified for a few seconds what the key, what shall I do? However, we'd been told by better people 
to get down as low as you can like lie down on the, the ground if possible and I remember or lie down in the gutter and I remember looking at the gutter and thinking I can't do that if I lie down there I'm going to get my, my school uniform filthy and I shall get into trouble as if I wasn't in enough trouble already however I crouched up against the wall of the army and navy stores thinking the worst was going to happen however after a few minutes or so I realized that nothing had happened didn't I don't know where the bomb fell and I ran on to school I never I never said a word about it when I got there I'd just go into school and get on with things so it was it was a grim time but I'm lucky I survived.